It's time now for Ask the Surgeon, brought to you by Everett Bone and Joint. Everett Bone and Joint, the best choice to get you back in the game. Learn more at everettboneandjoint.com. All right, once a month, we uh, ask the surgeon, and joining us back this segment is Clay Wertheimer from Everett Bone and Joint. We're going to discuss elbow dislocation. Clay, hey, let's talk about this. Uh, give us, give us a. Um, How smooth was that, right? That was really good. That was really good. Didn't even have to do a lot of intro there since he's sitting right here. Um, tell us about the elbow anatomically. Set us up uh, about that joint. Okay. Uh, think about the bones first. The elbow is made up of three bones: um, your arm bone or humerus, and then your forearm bones, uh, and they join to make sort of a complex hinge. Uh, that opens and closes like the hinge of a door. Um, but it's a little bit more complicated than that because one of your forearm bones, the radius, also rotates. Um, so it allows that rotation of your palm down, palm up, uh, which a- actually occurs uh, at your elbow and wrist. So there's rotation and flexion and extension in the elbow. Now those bones are held together um, by ligaments, strong ropes that connect the uh, bones together on either side. Mm-hmm. So there's the famous Tommy John ligament, the mm-hmm. medial collateral ligament. Right. Uh, and then uh, similarly, there's another rope or ligament that connects uh, the humerus or arm bone to the ulna, mm-hmm. uh, which is that big bone you feel on the back of your elbow um, and stabilizes the outer uh, uh, half of the elbow. Mm-hmm. So suffice it to say, this is a fairly complex joint. It is, yeah. And, and it's a, a fairly stable joint. It is pretty stable, um, but it is the second most dislocated joint, second only to the shoulder uh, oh, wow. in terms of frequency of dislocations because people are falling on their outstretched arms a lot or uh, banging into uh, their uh, co-players or opposing players with their arms stretched out. And when that happens, when the uh, arm gets impacted like that and the elbow is extended, uh, there is a tendency to push the forearm bones back and dislocate the joint. Okay, so let's talk about th- that mechanism. So y- normally you have to b- have your arm extended, yes, and you have to have a force going through your arm, and then it drives those bones back on on, back. on the humerus, essentially on right. your upper arm bone. So typically the forearm bones end up behind the humerus bone. They go out posteriorly or towards the back is the most common. It can happen in other directions, mm-hmm. uh, both to the sides or even rarely in the front. And even more rarely, they can diverge and split apart. Wow. The two that sounds bones. painful. That's, that's really painful. <laughs> and it happens, you know, super high impact, like motor, motor vehicle accidents, things like that. But as, as far as the dislocation goes, is it, is it as easy to, do you guys just pop it back like you do shoulders when you yes, dislocate? Yes, typically we can. Um, but uh, really we think of when we are treating and taking care of these injuries, uh, one, uh, two different categories. One is a simple dislocation where the bones kind of come out of alignment and the soft tissues get torn, those ligaments we talked about, but the bones themselves aren't broken up. Uh, when you have a fracture associated with that dislocation, we call that a complex dislocation, and then it gets complex. The treatment of that type of injury is much more difficult and uh, often requires surgery to fix the bones in order to restore the stability of the joint because you can put the joint back in place, but if the bones are busted up, it's not going to stay in place. And you need to put some hardware in there then and yeah. do some kind of surgical the intervention. Then. Together, right. um, how, how often would you, would you say in a year um, office visits you see something like this? It's pretty rare, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, We see shoulder dislocations much more frequently. Mm-hmm. Um, so I probably can count on my hand over the 20 years the number of elbow dislocations that I've taken care of. Mm-hmm. And, and, and is there an age range that uh, you would see this more frequent? Well, there's sort of two big categories. One is children because they're falling off of, uh, you know, playground equipment and monkey bars and things like that. And uh, uh, at a certain age, once their bones are more formed, uh, they have a tendency to dislocate their elbow. Um, and then uh, there's a very common kind of dislocation of part of the elbow called nursemaid's elbow that mm-hmm. happens when the nursemaid or mom or dad grabs the kid forcibly by the arm and says, oh, let's go. And and uh, one of the forearm bones, the radial 
uh, bone, the radius uh, pops out of place. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in adults and active uh, adults that are uh, doing things like playing lacrosse or mm-hmm. smashing into each other or mm-hmm. uh, gymnastics and falling from a height on their outstretched arm. You know, I think this is one injury that Maury hasn't had. I, mean, I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're due. You're due. No. So what, what, are the, what are the symptoms? I mean, um, th- this is obviously very painful if, if something like this happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the elbow looks pretty funky when it happens. So you and, have you some know, deformity you can then. Clearly tell there is deformity. Typically yeah. in the posterior dislocation, I mean, those forearm bones uh, that uh, normally make the corner of your elbow are sticking out in the back, and the skin is often tented. And there's kind of a dent where normally there isn't a dent, so it's fairly obvious when it happens. And and now and, and there's some uh, pretty involved nerves coming through that joint. Yeah, and, that's and a great point. I mean, that was the other thing I uh, wanted to mention about elbow dislocations that make them uh, a sphincter tightening experience for those of us that treat them. Uh, there's uh, a big artery mm-hmm. that comes right down the front of the elbow that supplies, um, you know, the arm and hand, uh, and uh, then there are two um, very important nerves, your median nerve that causes the carpal tunnel syndrome Mm -hmm. that you guys have talked about before, and your ulnar nerve, your funny bone nerve, and both of those nerves come very, very close to the elbow joint, and therefore they can be damaged or even entrapped, mm-hmm. uh, one has to be careful when you reduce the elbow. So, that so when you reduce, your, I mean, that, that, it, it, technically you're putting it back yeah, in you place. Put those bones, the forearm bones, back into place and get that uh, that uh, hinge lined up so you know the notch fits and mm-hmm. the forearm bones integrate back and, and correspond back to where they're supposed to with the end of the humerus or arm bone. It's, it's very very complicated and uh more you're going to say something I was there? just going to I was just going to tell everybody that we're listening to uh Dr. Clay Wertheimer to the ass the surgeon segment brought to you by Everett Bone and Joint on the Health Matter show. Here's my question I had. Do you still cast? Would you cast? You know, we don't. That's a great question. Um what we've Thank learned you. He's back. Yeah. More back. back. <laughs> the I've had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> uh what we've learned is the longer you keep in the simple dislocations, that is the elbow dislocations, which are the most common that don't involve uh, a bone breaking, part of the articular or joint surface breaking, uh, we don't cast them because we've learned the longer you keep the elbow immobilized, the, the stiffer it becomes mm-hmm. and the the less good the outcome is. So uh, we usually keep them uh, immobilized just temporarily for a few days so to let the swelling go down. Um, and then uh, start early protective movement. Um, and what I usually do is put people into a hinge brace, almost like a knee brace, you know, with, with hinges at the, uh, at the side. Um, usually the, the part of the elbow that gets damaged, the soft tissues that get damaged that you want to protect are on the outside um, or radial side, as we call it medically, but on the uh, lateral or outside part of the elbow. That's what gets uh, nailed the first and the most seriously. Usually the Tommy John ligament, the medial collateral ligament, uh, is intact in a posterior elbow dislocation. Uh, so that's not torn up typically. It can be in the real serious ones, but typically it isn't. So um, now we're using braces that just have a hinge on the outside. Hmm. But w- with the elbow, you, you, you want motion in there because, like you said, with right. an elbow, if you lose that motion, boy, that's hard to get back, it is. isn't it? Yeah. That you joint's know, strange in that way. It is. I mean, Some joints are funny about that. Like, yeah. you, you know, the middle knuckle on your finger, the, the so-called PIP joint, when that thing gets hurt or damaged, it almost always swells up and stiffens up, and the elbow is similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has a tendency to get stiff when it's injured. So, so now he, let, let's let's uh, let's put you in action, okay? Because your group, Everett Bone and Joint, is the team physicians for the lacrosse, Washington Stealth Lacrosse team here in town, right? Yeah, I'm happy to say that. It's, yeah, it's, and 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 you uh, first game out of the shoot, <laughs> um, uh, you know, yeah. and you had an elbow dislocation. Did. Didn't that you? was quite a game. I mean, that was my first experience taking care of the team. You know, I was excited about it, and it was the big game, the first home game, uh-huh. and. Man, it was quite the game. We yeah. had a guy with an elbow dislocation. We had a guy that had a fracture of the bones around his eye Ooh. Uh, mm-hmm. and an eye injury. Uh, we had a guy with a broken hand, and we had a guy that got his lip 
cut up. So it's a um, contact sport. Contact sport. But subsequently, I've heard you know we uh, the seven of us take turns each home game switching off. And my other partners who have taken care of the the games at home subsequently, there hasn't been any serious injury. So, so they probably not lucky. don't want you to be there. Then. <laughs> yeah. So this particular dislocation. So by the time you got on the field, you you looked at it, and the deformity and the, the the patient's complaint. You knew it was a dislocation. Yeah. How did it happen? Uh, he actually ran into his uh, teammate, or his teammate ran into him, mm-hmm. and he had his arm out holding his stick. And the guy, you know, they just met full force. I mean, these guys are big dudes. I mean, yes, these are yeah. uh, adult guys. You know, they're six three, two twenty, two twenty five, and in a, in a box. Right, and, and, and they're not on skates. Uh, yeah. They are on. You know, they've got uh, athletic shoes on turf, and they're moving and colliding fast. So um, this thing was this elbow. Obviously, you diagnosed right away, dislocated. How how, how do you, in, in in medical term, you reduce that or put it back into place, reduce it? How do you do that? Well, uh, first, on, on the field there. You know, we took him off the field. We got him into the training room, and um, and uh, you got to have some kind of anesthesia because typically, because of the pain, the muscles that cross the joint uh, really contract just to try to splint that joint. So. Uh, what I did is I injected uh, uh, an anesthetic into the joint, uh, and that uh, really provided some temporary relief. Like a lidocaine or yeah, something like that? Exactly. Something just it filled up the joint with lidocaine. And then uh, once he was relaxed, I could just, I got the trainer to help me, and we put a little traction on it, you know, kind of pulled a little bit and just gently guided the forearm bones back into place. How many times have you done that in your career? I would say probably three or four. Yeah, good job. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Did you tell him that? Hey, this is only the third time I've ever done this before. <laughs> only until, uh, I didn't mention that until after it was reduced. <laughs> so, so, um, so is he back? Yeah, I mean, I was, is he playing again? Uh, well, he's, uh, we've given him the green light to start practicing. Huh. You know, he's in a brace. We kept him out for, you know, he's been out for a couple weeks. But once I told him, you know, once he feels comfortable, he has his full range of motion back um, and he can practice and handle a stick, um, I'm going to let him play in his brace. What, what is it normal? Is that like a, a normal four to six week yeah. kind of return to play? Yeah. You know, yeah. that magic number doesn't come from the air. It, it takes your body about six weeks to make collagen. Right. Which is the basic that's the, building that's block the connective of tissue connective of our body. Tissue, yeah. And the collagen is made inside the cell and then it's spit out from the cell mm-hmm. and then it kind of gets lined up and... And process. So that process, you know, from start to finish takes about six weeks. So. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if, if I'm a youth coach, a youth parent, um, and I see something like this on, on, the, on the field, um, what, what, what's my first uh, line of action? I mean, should I, if, if I think that elbow is dislocated, get that athlete uh, to the ER, right? Yeah, that's my advice. I wouldn't try to play doctor. Right. Because um, you could be wrong and it could uh, have a bony injury or a nerve injury that you could complicate. So the best rule of thumb for is good first aid. Splint them where they lie and get them to the ER so a doc can take care of them. As always, fascinating information. <laughs>